Thank heavens for understanding Buddy Read Partners. We had successfully completed The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes and Sean the Book Maniac and I decided part two. We'd set a date. Then I got busy at work, so we pushed it back. Then Sean became unwell, so we pushed it back. And then my life became hectic and we didn't push it back and I sort of dropped the ball. But budding reading is perhaps the most delightful way of experiencing a book. And if I have a recommendation for doing your first or second buddy read, pick a short book, pick a novella that you can read quickly, discuss quickly and really, really enjoy. So welcome to part two of the Sean and Leah buddy read for The Driver's Seat by Muriel Spark. Now, I was supposed to film when I was in Sydney and show you some wonderful footage of around Sydney and different places, but I didn't. On the Thursday night I was there, I caught up with my dearest friend in the whole world and cocktails and a bottle of wine later and there was no videos to be done. And then on the Friday I had the morning in Sydney but I was a bit dusty so I wasn't really in a filming frame of mind. Come Friday and the weekend and my dad's 70th birthday so my sister who lives more than 1200 kilometers from me was home and so we had dinner and a couple of bottles of wine. And then the birthday party for Saturday lunch was lunch and like 9 million cup bottles of wine. I seriously think I was on quality assurance for champagne here in Australia for the last weekend. So this weekend I'm on detox, definitely. However, I have a bit of footage. I shot one little photo of me enjoying Japanese in Sydney at my favorite Japanese restaurant, uh, Ipudu, right in the heart of the city. And they do fantastic ramen noodles. Is it ramen or ramen? Sean, please explain on that one. But I very much enjoy my noodles. There's a photo and I'll show you a photo of me with my delightful and wonderful niece. I am becoming that auntie, the one who gives the books. And that is something I am most proud of. So in this part two of the video, I will show my initial thoughts to finishing the book. I'm going to add in Sean's final thoughts of adding the book. And then I reread the book straight away and I'm going to add those thoughts and wrap that up from there. So thank you for persevering with the delay with respect to these videos. Thank you, Sean, for another fantastic buddy read. What are we doing next? Now that's the question. If somebody has a suggestion for what I should be buddy reading with Sean next, please put it in down below. But please enjoy the rest of this video. Unlike the beautiful footage of Japan that you're putting in your vlogs, my dispensary is getting a workout this week. I promise on our next buddy read, I will have sweeping landscapes of the Australian outback. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How can less than 100 pages pack such a punch. Muriel Spark has just skyrocketed to my favourite authors of all times. Wow, just wow, enough superlatives Leah, let's get on with some sort of discussion here. I'm going to compare it to both Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine, as I did in my first video, and tie it back to our first buddy read, The Sense of an Ending. I just loved how Lisa was this quirky, bitter, cantankerous, strange woman, yet unapologetically so, and completely different to Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine, which is getting all the press at the, at the moment. Eleanor I found to be oh, quirky for the sake of being annoying. I didn't feel as though there was any compulsion, any reason to find out why Eleanor Oliphant was strange until the very end when it all just was neatly summed up. Yet here Lisa is just as itchy, just as uncomfortable, yet at no point do you get the reason why. And that's okay, you just keep going Oh, but this might be the reason. Oh, but what about this? And then I kept flicking back in pages to find out, oh, that was telegraphed back in page 40. I just couldn't get over how intricately and cleverly Muriel Spark wove the story through the whole time. And this is where I felt it differed completely from the sense of the ending, sense of an ending, in the fact that with Julian Barnes, you never really got the why 
but you didn't really care either. Whereas here, you didn't get the why, and you were just going, but, but, but I want more. And that was the brilliance of this novella. I am going to turn around and reread this this weekend. I'm so glad I didn't rush reading it at the end of last week when I was busy with family functions because if I'd rushed through it I think I would have missed all those nuances those that energy that propelled the book forward I want to reread and find more about why Lisa was putting herself in these situations where she kept saying you're not my type you're not my type and she kept pushing herself into these itchy uncomfortable awkward situations and I just I'm just gobsmacked. I haven't watched the Elizabeth Taylor movie. Maybe I'll watch the movie and then reread it. But right now, I am completely incoherent on this book. But I love it. All right. Have a fabulous day, Sean. Thanks for a very challenging buddy read. Sorry I dropped the ball on this one. But looking forward to perhaps my reread and rediscussion. Have a great day. This is a great little yakitori shop. It's about a three minute walk from my house and it's such a great place and I've only been here twice in the seven years that I've lived nearby. It's just crazy. This is a soba restaurant that's quite new and I've never been because I don't really like soba. This is where I do my laundry. And this is, this little izakaya, I'm not sure what it is. It's got a lot of character, look at that. I've never been inside. Oh, you can see me in the mirror. I don't know how I feel about that. There's a massage parlor I've never been to. That's where I get my hair cut for 10 bucks. This looks like a handsome guy on the right. Yep. Bakery. These are all within, like I say, this is a little Shulton guy or shopping street near my house. I'm just going to look for a place to stop and do my video. All right, here I am with final thoughts. I finished the novel about an hour ago. Oh, did you write the same three letter response on the last page as you did on our last buddy read, Leah? What the? I loved it. It's so dark. I'm not sure I get it. I think I do, but I'd be hard pressed to say what that means to get it. I loved the opening paragraph on the, I believe the penultimate chapter about the chandelier at the Metropole when she walks in shining on the just and unjust. I've already put that up on Instagram and Litzy. You've probably seen it by now, Leah. The chandeliers of the Metropole, dispensing a vivid glow upon the just and unjust alike, disclose Bill the Macrobiotic seated gloomily by a table near the entrance. He jumps up when Lees enters and falls upon her with a delight that impresses the whole lobby, and in such haste that a plastic bag that he is clutching, insufficiently sealed, emits a small trail of wild rice in his progress towards her. Did you see that coming? The plot going full circle back to a certain someone? On the airplane I didn't see that coming and that just about killed me I have a wild thought in my brain that I can't shake the book that she is carrying and holding up in front of herself like a badge or like an identity card that book 
sounds weird, but I have a really strong feeling. That book is Muriel Sparks' novella, The Driver's Seat. The other thing, and I'll kind of just close with this because I really don't have a whole lot. I, this is a book I'm just going to have to sit with. But... Okay, there's a bit of a spoiler coming up, so fast forward maybe 20 seconds just to avoid it, but as I think I said in the introduction, we know what's hap gonna happen in the opening paragraphs of chapter two, but it's not included in any synopsis, and I do allude to it in a general abstract way in this next little bit, so just fast forward if you don't want to have any spoilers whatsoever. Adrian in the sense of an ending that we buddy read last week and his philosophical view of suicide in a way this novel could be read as a fictional exploration of that particular philosophy i just thought it was brilliant and i don't know what else to say you could do a feminist analysis of this you could take issue with all sorts of things and gender politics blah 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 but I'm not going there at all other people can and that's fine but I don't usually like fiction this dark but I loved it I wouldn't want a steady diet of this kind, these kinds of stories but I thought it was absolutely magnificent and I can't wait to hear what you thought now it's Sunday and I'm at work yesterday I had a fantastic meeting and is that an oxymoron? Can you really ever have fantastic meetings? But I had a fantastic meeting in a small, teeny tiny town called Baraba. And the meeting was held in a beautiful Art Deco hotel that's just been newly renovated, has a fantastic cinema, and I'm going to insert some footage there of the beautiful meeting space. If you have to spend a Saturday at a meeting, then that's where you're going to do it. Now, the book. I've rewatched, well, no, I've reread the book and I've watched the film. I still stand by it. I'm just simply going to devour anything else that Miss Sparks had. I'm just loving the taught language. My take home message and the vibe and the feeling I got of the whole thing was it felt so modern. Even though it's 50 years old, it feels just so modern and so just fantastic. And I just loved the whole experience. Not very cohesive, but I'm looking forward to doing another buddy read in the future. I promise I'll have some more photos of beautiful Australian footage coming up very soon. Thanks everyone for sticking by.